Hi, I'm David Pounds, Chair of the Art Department at Palm Beach Atlantic University. Welcome to the first in a series of tutorial videos designed to help you achieve your goal of creating amazing portraits in Adobe Illustrator. The version I'm using is Illustrator CC 2014, but the majority of the techniques I'll be sharing with you are achievable with earlier versions of the program as well. You will learn a lot about Illustrator regardless of your skill level, but you will need to have a fairly good grasp of pen tool technique before you can expect to reproduce the results you see here. So if you're ready, let's dive right in. For me, a successful illustration starts with good reference material. Because proper lighting is critical, I try to take my own pictures if I can. This not only allows me to control the lighting, but I also get a variety of poses to choose from. I find that lighting works best from a single source, coming from one side of the face. Artificial lighting can work, but I prefer the natural light that occurs when the sun is low on the horizon late in the day, what photographers call the golden hour. Don't ever use a flash, as it washes out the highlights and shadows that are so necessary to defining the volumes of the face and hair. I like the face to be turned slightly away from the camera, chin down, with the head tilted a bit. This pose puts the nose a little to the side, emphasizing the bridge of the nose, making it easier to draw, and it minimizes the nostrils. I will also take a few close-ups of the eyes to help me with color details later on. Once I settle on the image I will be using, I bring it into Photoshop to make any necessary adjustments to color, contrast, and sharpness. I will also make a duplicate of the image and use levels to open up the midtones. This allows me to see detail in the shadows that I might otherwise miss. With my reference photos prepared, I'm now ready to set up my Illustrator file. I usually work with 8.5 by 11 or 11 by 17 documents set to portrait orientation. I feel more comfortable mixing in the CMYK color environment rather than RGB, but you can certainly work with whichever color model works best for you. Now I import and position my first reference photo. Best practice is to isolate various elements on their own layers, so I'm going to give this layer a descriptive name, then lock it so I don't accidentally move it later on. Then I do the same thing with the second reference photo, being careful to line it up exactly with the first image. This allows me to quickly toggle back and forth between the two images simply by turning off the visibility of the top layer. I follow the same procedure to create layers for hair, face, eyes, and so on. In some cases, if the highlight color that you want to use uh, isn't going to work for the colors, so let's say if I'm, if I'm drawing her hair and that's a dark brown, and the highlight color is set to dark brown, that isn't going to work for us. I won't be able to see. So I'm just going to come in here, and I can choose whichever highlight color that I want it to be. Now, I recommend that we um, start with just general outlines of things, and then we go into more detail in a gradual way. So I'm going to start with the hair. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to make sure that that is active. Then I'm going to get my pen tool. Now, I'm assuming that you have relatively good skills with the pen tool. If you don't, then this isn't the tutorial for you. Now, um, I like to adjust my path as I go along. And the best tool for doing that is the white selection tool. The keyboard shortcut is the command key. Notice when I hold it down, it turns black. I don't really want that tool. I want the white one. So I'm going to click on this, and then go back to my pen tool. So when I do that keyboard shortcut of the command key, it's whichever selection tool I had last. That's what's going to work for me. So I've got the pen tool selected. I want to make sure that I have no fill color at all and we're going to make the stroke be black and we're also going to make it thinner so rather than the standard one point I'm going to dial in 25 to make it a quarter of a point. Now I'm going to start and just kind of what I'm seeing here that's what I'm going to recreate for the outline but that doesn't mean that the exactly the way it is is how I'm going to keep it especially down in here um, this is, is a little wispy and a little chaotic, 
So later on, I'm going to go back and refine it, sort of design this a little bit. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And I'm going to draw the outline of the hair following along with the hairline. We do the face on a separate layer, and it's going to go underneath. So we just come in here, and I'm not trying to draw every single little wisp. I'm holding down the Option key because this is an abrupt change of direction. If you find that as you are making these changes, you have a tendency to um, miss the point and have to start your line over again, then just go back and make those adjustments later on. Again, like I said, I'm going to be adjusting these, designing it. For now, I'm just trying to get the general outline of this. We're working from the general to the specific. I'm trying to use as few points as possible. And this is probably going to be one of the areas where I'm going to come back in and make some changes later on. So instead of slavishly following what's going on here with the hair, I'm going to look at it and say, okay, what looks best from a design standpoint? And this is something that uh, is hard to do. This does take some patience. This is not a process that you can just get in there very quickly and draw it out. Uh, this is very controlled. And some people like that, and some people don't. Uh, I think I'm going to just ignore that for now and come up here. I'm trying to get that flow nice and smooth if I can. When I'm holding down the space bar, that allows me to get the grabber hand to adjust this as I go. Alright, so let's hit Control-0 to fit in window. Let's turn off these reference layers. And so this is the outline of it. Let's go ahead and fill it up, just sort of, for sort of a frame of reference. So I'm looking at the silhouette of this. There's some things that I don't like, especially down in here. But like I said, we're going to come back later and we're going to change this to make it work a little bit better. Turn our reference photos back on. Uh, let's go ahead and put this back to a black outline. And now I'm going to switch over to the face. Now. I don't want you to try and match exactly this right here. Remember, this, this face shape is going to go underneath the hair. It makes it a lot easier when we are doing shape-to-shape -shape blends. You don't have to worry about the, the blend stopping exactly right here. We can just bring it up and it's going to be hidden under the hair. Now that I have completed both shapes and filled them with solid color, you can see how positioning the face layer below the hair layer avoids the problem of the two shapes having to match exactly at the hairline. We're now ready to move on to video two, where I will show you several techniques for drawing eyes.